All right, so again, uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Sean, he, him, from Northern California, Southern Pomo land. It's lovely to be here. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, right or wise view and refuge, seeing clearly. The Buddha described his path, uh, the path that he found and then taught, uh, as for the relief of suffering. And at the heart of the project of relieving suffering uh, is first to find it. So, uh, so we might say in a, uh, in, in a slightly ch- tongue-in-cheek way that the heart of our practice is to become more intimate with our suffering. It's true. It's not the only thing that practice is, but it's necessary. Intimate is a word that I like to use as a translation for mindful, be, be mindful of something. Mindful uh, sometimes means notice, sometimes means uh, uh, connect with in a way that you would remember it. The word for mindfulness, sati in Pali, uh, literally means memory. So uh, mindfulness is actually the quality of, of attention that makes it possible to remember something. Our nervous systems, the animal nervous systems that we have, um, generally remember things when there's emotional charge to them or, um, or some other kind of energetic uh, signal you know, that suggests, like, pay extra attention here. You know, if you scan back through your week, let's say, uh, let's do a tiny short-term memory exercise, right? You might, you might find that the things you remember, if you said, like, what happened yesterday? What happened the day before? What happened the day before, you know? Uh, You'll probably remember the moments that had some emotional uh, charge to them. Emotion, in a way, you know, we could think of as the, you know, the result of uh, the complicated process of our bodies being in different circumstances and having to figure out how to be, what to do, in the various relationships and circumstances, conditions we find ourselves in. And emotions are, uh, one way of thinking about them is that they're a hint toward what to do in a certain circumstance. So something is frightening, uh, you know, some, there, I feel danger or, or stress, I feel some fear, some tension. Uh, that's a sign, right? That's a message that says something's going on, you know? Is it time to escape? you know, to get out of here? Is it time to summon some energy or some courage to do something that's uncomfortable? Uh, what's, it, what's it time to do? Likewise, with all the other feelings, you know, and the pleasant ones, you know, the, the feelings of delight or awe or, or love, you know, when, when I see my friend, like, that's, that's a message from my nervous system that says this person is safe and wonderful. Get close to them you know, connect with them, uh, renew that, that bond of connection, be warm, uh, you know, feel connected. And so we, we wander through this world that we didn't choose to be born into. Um, in some ways, we might say that. That's a metaphysical proposal. Maybe you did choose, and I just don't remember choosing, but there you go. Um, so many things in this world I wouldn't have chosen anyway. Clearly, that's true. Uh, but, here, but here we are. And so we're moving through the world. We have, the, we have feelings. Um, you know, we have the experience of being a tender, you know, vulnerable human being. And, and part of that is, is that there, it hurts. You know, it hurts to be in a world where there's so much greed and hatred and violence and fear and delusion and harm. It hurts to have the particular conditions that we each have, you know, given what the world is, the external conditions, you know, choose any. But 
uh, if I know anything about the city that many of you seem to live in and the, the area that I seem to live in, um, I know that they're both, you know, expensive. That's an external condition. And, uh, you know, may, you might have the conditions to be comfortable within that, and you might not. Right? And that depends on lots of factors. And so there's suffering, right? There's suffering in the economic world. Uh, there's suffering in the relationship world. Like maybe you're in a wonderful relationship or many that you, that you delight in, that you know, um, and there's probably still challenges. And maybe you're not in the relationships that you delight in and there's challenges. Maybe you want uh, kinds of relationships uh, that, that are not easy to come by. And that's, that's painful, you know. And of course, we have bodies that get sick and get tired and hurt and get, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, injured. Uh, my kid has this game that he really was into for a while um, recently, um, which was uh, he decided at some point a year ago or so that one of the worst places to be in the world was a really stinky porta potty not wrong, you know, I mean, there's worse, right? But, you know, he was onto something. Uh, and, and so he, he had a game where, where he, would, um, he would say, okay, would you rather stub your toe really hard or be locked in a super stinky porta potty? You know, and, and, you know, sometimes it was like, would you rather be thrown off a cliff and, and torn apart by lions or live in a stinky porta potty for 100 years. And you know, he, he was really, it was really, it was always like two bad things. Sometimes one of them was like mortally bad. And I'd be like, well, you know, I'll take the stinky porta potty over dismemberment by tigers. But you know, um, it was really, he's, he's seven. So like, this is a, this is like a, this is a six, seven year old doing this. Um, and there, there's some way that, that I kind of like, it was, it got annoying fast, but, but I was like, oh, you're, you're figuring out suffering. You know, you're like, well, there's, there's unpleasant things in the world and you can kind of rate them. You know, it's like, well, this, this is, this is bad, but this is really bad, you know? Um, and, uh, and so, and so, you know, good on him for trying to figure it out, you know, to start. Um, we're all still trying to figure it out in a, in a way like, like, the investigation of suffering, which is at the heart of seeing clearly, is a process by which we have to come into contact, intimate contact, mindful, intimate being with the feelings that are uncomfortable, that arise as a response to an uncomfortable world, to the conditions of the world. And so one of the ways of defining uh, right view or wise view, this is the first limb of the Buddha's Noble Eightfold Path. Um, it's defined in a bunch of ways. Uh, one way is to see the world, our experience, our lives, moment to moment, through the lens of the Four Noble Truths. The First Noble Truth says there is suffering, right? Things are painful. Um, and uh, particularly, Second Noble Truth, things are painful when we uh, grasp onto them being a certain way. When, I'm, when I really, really wish that the pleasurable thing would stay and the painful thing would end, um, that's, that's, that itself is painful because, um, because we're not in control, right? The punchline to a lot, to so much of this is that we're, we are not in control. And you know, we have a hand in things, but you can't make things be a certain way. And the main thing that you can't make be a certain way is your own feelings. So it's impossible to say to myself, um, self, uh, today, be content and have, and have some, you know, and just know that it'll happen. You know, I can't tell myself if, if I'm really upset about something, I can't just say, snap out of it. Like, let it go, man. I mean, you could say it. But um, saying it is not, is not necessarily the most powerful condition for it happening, right? Conditions have to change for it to happen. If I'm really upset about something relationally, 
um, I have to figure out what's the lever there. What do I have to do? I have to, maybe I have to actually have a conversation with someone and come into repair. Or I have to, I have to shift how I'm holding that relationship. Something um, has to shift. And, it's, and, it's, and the feeling doesn't change automatically when you shift something. You know, I can be like, oh, I've got to do the right thing. I'm going to have a repair conversation with this person. I go and do it. I use all my skills. They use all their skills. We're really trying to repair. We do the best we can. I walk away and, you know, and often I feel a bit better, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, okay, we did, just did the best we could. And it still hurts. Ouch. You know? And, and what, what right view asks of us, I think, is, is to be really honest with how this process works. That, that um, there, there just is suffering. And, and if you trace suffering back, say, what's, up? what's going on with this suffering? You're going to get to, like, oh, I just wish things were different, you know? And, and it's helpful in practice to get to that wish, like to feel that, you know, to, to, to look around at the world, politically, socially, economically, whatever your lens, right? Or the intimate world, relationships and, and livelihood and health and, um, you know, all of that, family, good Lord, you know, and just, and, and, and get to the point of just being able to say, I wish things were different. So just admit, I wish things were different. And when things are great and you're like, I love this, to really be able to say, you know, oh, this feels really good. Um, I appreciate this. This is, I, I'm going to take it in. This is, this feels good. It's not permanent. I know. This is, this is totally a, like cheer you up talk. Um, so suffering is one lens. The Four Noble Truths is one lens on uh, seeing the world clearly. Um, and the other that we've, that we've already hinted at and that I've already touched into is um, conditionality, which you can sum up in the word karma or kama in Pali. Uh, the, for, the, the teaching on conditionality says, you know, because of these things, this is happening. Um, and so, you know, because of these external conditions in the world, in my relationships, this feeling is present, you know, because of what I might think of as internal conditions, like my personality, which was born out of my family, my traumas, my history, my ancestry, my culture, my, you know, all of my uh, ident various identities, how those interrelate with the culture around me. My personality is a condition. Again, it's not me, right? It could be different, but it's, it's, it's what has arisen as a result of, of the world of you know this body in in its life being in the world this mind this heart and and so my experience which is the place where suffering happens has arisen as a result of conditions and so the when you take these two things together my experience is here as a result of conditions and my experience is marked by suffering sometimes by the absence of suffering, but then also by impermanence. And what you get is um, a clear-eyed model of how things are. Like, the best thing you can say about this is, it seems to be just how it is. Like, what the Buddha was doing was describing the world, how experience works, in a way that is very compassionate, but it's very accurate. And in that sense, it's not trying to coddle you. Or um, in a certain way, it's not trying to make you feel better. It is ultimately trying to make you feel better because being liberated from suffering feels really good. But it's not coddling any part of our personality. You know, it doesn't say you're basically a good person. That doesn't really matter. What, I'm not even sure what that means. Um, you know, go, good and bad are actions, not innate characteristics. So like, sure, you're basically a good person. That doesn't matter that much. What you do can be harmful or helpful, right? You get to make choices about your actions. And, and here's the place where, where training comes in. Everything is conditioned. Everything is impermanent. There's suffering, all that. 
That's how the world works. That's the wise view piece. Wise view unfolds into action. So given all that, what should I do? How do I respond? How do I help? And so we have this beautiful invitation to come out of stories about the world that are uh, that we've learned from elsewhere that we've accumulated over the years but that simply aren't helpful because they're not accurate they're not true uh, this is a tradition that that understands that there is truth and non-truth it's not all like radically relative um, it's actually possible to say like yeah it, nothing lasts you know and so some story that there's an eternity that lasts forever it's a story B and blessings to that story it's it's you know brought relief from suffering to many people um, but uh, as far as we can tell in human culture it's a story you know actions have results have impacts you know that's that's karma right that's conditionality actions have impacts the actions of our ancestors the actions of other people's ancestors have impacts that are being felt now that i can feel in my that they're present in my mood you know um you know i if i tune into it i might say that i'm grumpy about american politics right now okay fine you know that's a condition that was brought about by you know you can if you you study your history it's like well how far back do you want to go you can see the conditions that gave rise to this and you go back further and say oh you can see the conditions that gave rise to that and you can see the conditions that gave rise to that and even if you run out of of recorded history to learn you can you can just understand that you know how things are in let's say the relational world of humans well, that depends on what happened before. Why, like, how could it not? It's true for more than humans. You know, how things are in the world of the whales depends on what happened before. You know, not just human actions, but whale actions and other shark actions and water actions. And, you know, uh, everything is dependent. And so that's a proposition that if we lean into it, gives us the space to practice with our particular personal suffering in a different way because the thing that is so difficult about personal suffering is that um, we think it's ours uh, we think it's it's um yes uh like in a way we 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 will we'll, we'll often feel like it's it's ours in a way that we should be able to control it or you know make it be a certain thing or if i was only doing things better if i was doing more right i wouldn't feel this way uh, and and that's painful that's that itself is suffering you know so see clearly this tradition tells us like see as clearly as you can Part of that means disidentifying with things so you can see their conditionality more clearly. And then just a bow to refuge that the natu a natural result of being in the world can be to feel unmoored, unheld. Because there's no guarantees, right? That, you know, a beautiful relationship or material wealth or social privilege all of those things are subject to so many conditions. You know, the social situation changes and the wealthy become poor, the safe become endangered. You know, uh, there's no, the, the, the happily married are divorced or widowed, you know, like there's no guarantees. And so we need something to turn to that can, that can buoy the heart, that can uplift the heart so that to, to, that we, that we can, not fall into despair and that thing in the dharma traditions is refuge that we go for refuge to the buddha 
in a very simple way, that means uh, that you, you actually take it on, that it's possible to be free of this pain, that you can be awake in a way that's like luminous for, the, for, for an entire lifetime, like for, you know, post awakening, like that it's possible to get, get more free within a lifetime and live from that place in a way that affects so many people, has powerful impact in the world, has, is beautiful, full of love, full of relationship, but free. That's Buddha, awake, the one who's awake. So you take it on, you say, oh, that's real. I'm gonna take that on. Yeah, that helps, you know, that this isn't just a, you know, a kind of hellscape of loss. It's not, right? The world is absolutely not a hellscape of loss. You know, the refuge into Dharma is like, it's possible to be free by training ourselves. You can work on it. So, you know, here's the teachings. They've been preserved. Blessings to all those who have preserved the teachings. Here we are, 2,600 years after the lifetime of this amazing being. And he was not unique. There have been many Buddhas. He's not a deity. It's possible to do this. Here's the path. And the Sangha is like, you know, you have help. You have help. There's so many people in this world who are devoted to being free in their hearts, and they're here for you. You can find them. And, you know, uh, and so, um, and, and those things are considered uh, refuges because they point beyond suffering. You know, you can still, the Buddha can still be a cause for suffering. You might feel like you can never get there. The Dharma can be a cause for suffering. It's too difficult or it's too foreign or it's impossible, whatever. The Sangha can be a cause for suffering because it's full of people, for crying out loud, and they're difficult. But the existence of the refuges, the gems of Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, uh, is, go, goes beyond the particular conditions of a particular Sangha, a particular people. Uh, particular teachers. Uh, and so one of the deepest meaningful attainments in this life is not, you know, some mystical like full liberation, but it's the, it's the stepping into the stream of the refuges that uh, in the texts says uh, one becomes independent of others in the, in the world of the teachings. And, and that just means that you've seen clearly enough like the door has been cracked open, you understand where this is leading, that you could get there on your own. Right? You've, you've, uh, you've taken in uh, the, um, somebody gave you the compass and taught you how to use it. And then now, even if you were alone once again in the wilderness, you would know how to get home because you've been shown the way. And so this is the, this is the offering of, of, of the refuges. And so, with them, we can, we can embark on the path of seeing clearly and helping to uplift and, and clarify our own hearts and in doing so bring clarity into the world and into our relationships and all of our, all of our relations and actions pouring forth from that, creating the conditions for the next moments and the next days and the next practitioners to come after us. All right. Um, thank you for listening so warmly. Blessings uh, on the path. And let's take a couple minutes uh, for any uh, reflections, responses, questions, complaints.